If you want to learn how to make delicious striped bass, check out this video. Hey guys, this is Chris here again. Thank you so much for tuning back in. I do really appreciate it. Today we're actually going to be doing a catch and cook on one of the big striped bass that I caught yesterday. I actually haven't even had a chance to measure that fish. I knew it was a keeper. Uh, we only kept two, uh, but we're going to go ahead and pull that fish out, take a measurement. I'm going to show you how to fillet this fish, take care of it, uh, and then we're going to do a striper parm, one of my favorite recipes for these striped striper caught just yesterday didn't even get a chance to measure big old belly too go to the fork that's only actually so just about 35 inches not huge by any stretch of the imagination, but good eating size. And look at that fat belly. I almost guarantee there's going to be at least one adult bunker in there, but you can see how beautiful these fish are. Look at those fins. They get this big tail flopping in the current. And on light gear, they'll beat you up. Beautiful fish. So now we're going to go ahead and fillet this bad boy up and make a good meal use okay guys so what you're gonna need to fillet this striped bass I typically have two knives ready to roll this is one of the larger knives from offshore angler that I purchased at Bass Pro Shops this is one of my Bubba blades this one's seen quite a bit of action filleting up a bunch of tuna and I always like to have a really good chef's sharpener handy Typically, I just like to make my first cut somewhere along that spine. Work your way right down. I'm going nice and slow today. Usually I go a heck of a lot faster. Work it right down. Make a little cut there. Connect it. All I really need to do is get right in there and then go right along the spine. Taking care to always be right near that spine. Okay. Make a cut just behind that dorsal or the pec fin rather. And right here you're going to hit a whole bunch of ribs. Okay, right about there is, is really kind of where the bulk of that top part of the fillet stops and then it spreads down into some of the belly meat, all right? So now you've ran it along the dorsal aspect of the spine down to the spine itself. Hopefully you can see that there, okay? And now all I need to do is just come right through. There you go. I'll work right up. You can see this fillet already start to come together beautifully, okay? Now, what I like to do, I don't want to get the belly meat and all the stomach contents spilling out onto the fillet. So I'll keep that out of the equation for the most part. So, work right around those ribs into the belly meat, okay? Get those ribs out of there and look at that perfect striped bass fillet there's a little bit more meat up in here you can always cut away some guys will even cut these ribs out and go ahead and cook them on the grill you can do that as well but i like this top this top part of the fillet right here that's where the money is all right 
We'll flip this fish over, do the same thing. There we go. Now I'm out of that rib. Perfect. Okay. So, two perfect striped bass fillets. I'll go ahead and take that skin off, third them. But first, I want to see what this girl's got in her belly. I'll almost guarantee that there's a, a whole bunker in there. I'll put money on it. Let's see, guys. So that one's... There it is. There's that bunker. I knew it was in there. So you have a bunker. Uh, looks like you have some remnants of sand eels as well. All right, throw that out for the seagulls. Oh, and there you go. There's a the second one. Pretty well digested. It's always important in my opinion to look at the stomachs of the fish that you're gonna eat, all right? And that's how to fillet a striped bass. All right guys, so you can see I have two perfect striped bass fillets now. Zoom on in here, huh? So you can see I've cut right around those ribs so you get them out of the way. You're not cutting right through them, which makes it really, really difficult. I've cut away all that belly meat. Everything left is all just perfect white meat, okay? So stay zoomed in and just watch how I fillet. Now what I do is I use my finger to kind of be able to anchor things. So I'll go just a little bit up from that. You lose only negligible amounts of meat. And then you just run right along the, the skin. And then what I do is I'll grab that skin and use that. And it's traction counter traction. And just like that, I now have perfectly skinned fillet. And then when you go to cook, you want to cut out all of this, this red meat and that makes a much better product for you. And also within this filet, there's absolutely zero bones. There's a few right down the middle, uh, but you can trim that up later. And then I'll go ahead and just cut these in thirds. Perfect striped bass filets, all ready to go for striper parm. We'll pop them in one of these Ziploc bags. I'll do the other side. Welcome to my home. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of cooking inside. Today's recipe, this is striper parm. I know that sounds a little unorthodox, a little unconventional, but it's absolutely delicious, guys, all right? So give it a chance. Uh, this was recommended to me last year by two of my buddies, Eric and Tommy. I'll give a shout out to them. Last year was lights out basically every single trip. We were getting our limit of striped bass without any difficulty, uh, even though we let go quite a bit of fish. We kept a decent amount for the table, and after a while I was just looking for something a little bit different. Um, so I went ahead and gave this recipe a try. Now basically all I really did was I took the way that I make my chicken parm and applied it to the striper parm. Uh, it really comes out to be almost like a very tender chicken parm or very tender veal parm. Uh, here's all the ingredients you're going to need. I'm going to zoom in in a second and go through everything you're going to need to make this recipe and it's pretty quick. It probably only takes about, I don't know, 10 minutes to prep or so and you know, a grand total of maybe 30 minutes to cook. So, right, so the ingredients you're going to need to make this delicious striper parm. So we'll start on my right here. You're just going to need a bottle of extra virgin olive oil. You're going to need a carton of Italian breadcrumbs, any, any brand is fine. And then this is Lydia's marinara sauce. Uh, I'm Italian, I live in New Jersey. Typically we call this gravy. I make my own for the most part for my Sunday gravy, but for the purpose of this recipe, jar is just fine. This Lydia's is absolutely delicious. Uh, another brand I would recommend would be Rouse. That's, uh, that's phenomenal as well. Uh, and then I just use a little garlic powder or garlic salt just to spice up the breadcrumbs a little bit. You're gonna need uh, a large carton of eggs, mozzarella cheese, the actual striped bass fillets themselves, which I had filleted up in previous frames. And then you're just gonna need a baking dish and uh, a beautiful young assistant. See ya. All right, so this is one of the uh, quartered pieces of the fillet. What you're gonna wanna do is at least cut out this middle part of the bloodline and then you wanna trim off all the red meat as well. I just think that gives you a much better product in the end um, and, and you wanna do that for pretty much any way that you prep this striped bass in my opinion. This makes it uh, pretty darn gamey. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just trim that out. You just kinda of go in at an angle and you just work down that, that bloodline and just get that out. And now you can see 
it's really all just nice, perfect white meat from there. And then I'll take this off. Nice sharp knives, okay guys? So there you go, perfect. We could probably trim that up a little bit too, but you're ready to roll. A couple pieces just like that, and uh, you're ready to start cooking. All right guys, so I have all my uh, prepped up striped bass fillets. I'm gonna make a quick egg wash, so this is four whole eggs. I have my breadcrumbs spiced up with a little bit of garlic powder. All you gotta do is just a simple egg wash. Coat the fillet, dredge it real good in that in those breadcrumbs, pat it down real good so it sticks. We'll do another one. Nice big piece here. Get in there, coat it up real good. Dredge it up real good. Pound it down so it sticks. And repeat. Alright, so all my fillets are breaded and prepped and ready to roll. Uh, I've turned my stove on to medium high on each pan. Uh, these are just routine fry pans. Uh, we'll pour the olive oil and just give it a nice thick coating on the bottom. I already put a little bit in there, but you want to do a nice pretty thick coating. And once that gets nice and you know super hot, then we're gonna add our fillets. Alright guys, so it's been about five minutes now. I just flipped our striper fillets. Uh, we're going to go ahead and zoom in now so you can see the appearance that you're really looking for uh, on each side. You can see that nice golden brown. So probably about five minutes or so on that other side. And then we're going to go ahead and pull them out of the fryer and uh, get them ready to put in the oven and, and finish up this recipe. These fillets are, are done and looking delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them off now. You want to apply them to just a, a paper towel for about a minute or so, pat them dry, just get some of that oil absorbed off. Again, we'll, we'll pull all them off and then I'll just pat it a little bit dry with, with the paper towel on the top as well. Alright, so it's been about a minute or so, I've let the paper towel just absorb some of that olive oil from the fillets themselves. Now we're just going to go ahead and transfer them to this baking pan. I've layered the bottom with some of that Lydia's marinara sauce. So just, just layer that, that baking sheet, spread the fillets out. That. Okay, now we're going to put more Lydia's sauce right on top. No, no magic to this. Just kind of spread that out a little bit. Get it nice and even here. And now for my favorite part, the mozzarella cheese. I preheated my oven to 400 degrees. We're going to put this in there. The fish is already cooked, so it's really just a matter of heating up that sauce and getting that mozzarella cheese nice and melted. So we'll go ahead and do that. That probably is going to take about 10 to maybe 15 minutes. All right, guys, so it's been about 15 minutes. Uh, everything's looking really good. Pull it out of the oven. Let's get on over here, Alana. And there you go, striped bass parm. Mozzarella cheese is nice and melted, a little bit of golden brown on top, bubbly, sizzly, looks absolutely delicious. So we're going to dig in. So tonight we're going to pair this nice striper parm with a nice red blend, double T. And I'm going to go ahead and dig in. Looks so good. Oh my God. That's really good. Really delicious. That is my striper parm recipe. I hope you guys like this video. Hit that like button, subscribe below. Many more videos coming up. I'm going to keep digging in because that's absolutely delicious. This is Chris signing out. We'll see you.